So how does the handbook differ from the previous book? What we've tried to do in the handbook is to make something accessible to people who are working on this on their own. So the original book was focusing on the research evidence with some ideas for people about how to put this into practice in their own classrooms. But this handbook takes it much further. The idea is that a teacher or a small group of teachers who don't have enough people in their own municipality working on this to set up a TLC, a teacher learning community, they can just take a team of two or three people and they can use it as a workbook to actually plan their own professional learning and to keep track of their own learning journey as they progress. So why do you think the formative assessment should be implemented in all Swedish schools? Formative assessment is really just a response to one truth about the world and one fundamental principle of learning. The principle is that the best teaching starts from where the learner is. Ascertain this and teach accordingly, as David Asubel said many years ago. The simple fact about the world is that children do not learn what we teach. And so formative assessment arises as a very simple response to the idea that the best teaching starts from where the learner is, and our learners don't learn always what we teach, and therefore we need to find out what they did learn before we try to teach them something else. I've heard you talk about tight but loose. Could you explain that? When you're helping people change education within a municipality or a school, it's important to avoid two traps. One is to make things too tight, to try to script lessons so the teacher's creativity is lost. The other trap is to make things so loose that teachers just relabel what they've been doing forever with the new ideas. So that's the idea behind this approach or formative assessment with teacher learning communities. It's tight enough to give teachers structure, but it's loose enough to allow every single teacher to find themselves somewhere in the ideas that we're presenting. Okay, so could you summarise the five strategies? The first strategy, and it has to be the first, is that teachers should be clear about where they want their students to reach, and they share that idea with the students, so the students know where they're going. The second strategy is about eliciting evidence finding out where the students are before you teach them anything else. The third strategy is giving feedback that helps learners move forward. The idea is that we should find out what's going wrong and then give students advice about how to get further. And then the last two strategies underscore the fact that as Rick Stiggins says, the most important decisions taken in classrooms are not taken by teachers, they're taken by students. The best feedback will be useless if students have no desire to learn. So teachers have to activate students as learning resources for one another and they have to activate students as owners of their own learning. The idea is we use the power of students helping each other and students owning their own learning to take the learning forward. So what's the difference between a strategy and a technique? The five strategies of formative assessment, we believe the research evidence tells us will always work. So the idea of giving feedback can always improve learning. But how you give feedback depends on the circumstances in that particular classroom. So what we say is that the five strategies are always a good idea, but the techniques themselves require careful thought by the teacher. So the research tells us that the strategies are always good things to be doing, but how a teacher chooses to do that in their own classroom, which techniques they use, is very much a choice for the teacher. So the um Embedding Formative Assessment Pack. Could you summarise what's in that pack? What Siobhan Leahy and I have tried to do in the Embedding Formative Assessment Pack is to give a school everything it needs for two years of professional development for teachers focused on formative assessment. So it has agendas and handouts for 18 monthly meetings. It has a complete PowerPoint presentation with a transcript for kicking this off, for leading it in a school. It has examples of classroom practice, videos of students talking about this, of teachers doing it, to actually help people see what it looks like when it's really going well. So this isn't going to happen straight away. It takes a while, you're saying, to change practice. We need to... Second. Go do it again. So change isn't going to happen straight away. It's going to take time to change teachers' practice. Is that correct? Most schools are obviously under pressure to improve results quickly, and so people want quick fixes. And what we've learned in education is nothing works quickly. Things take time. 
So we're not going to promise that if teachers engage in this process of developing formative assessment, that results will improve straight away. But what we have discovered is that within a year or two, provided teachers engage in this process, provided leaders give teachers time to work together, then improved student achievement does result. result. But it's not going to be a quick process. It's going to take at least a year and possibly two years before we see a real impact on how much students are learning. So the um, administrators of the school, the school management and the board of school management have got to, to believe this is what should be done. This is important, is it? One of the most interesting things we've discovered by working with schools and municipalities is that the hardest thing of all is actually getting teachers time to work together. Even when school leaders agree that improvement of student achievement is a priority, they seem to find it very difficult to give teachers the time to work on improving their classroom practice. So the key thing is that leaders have to trust teachers that if they're given this time, they'll use it productively. Municipalities, school boards, school districts, they need to trust leaders that actually the best use of teachers' time is often not putting the teacher in front of students, but giving the teachers time to work together to improve their practice. So when the teachers meet in groups once every month for two years, presumably there's someone leading that group. Do they have to be an expert? When people set up these groups, one of the things they often want to do is to put somebody in charge of each of these groups. And they often choose the person with the most knowledge about formative assessment. We think that's a mistake. What we've discovered is that when there's somebody in the group who thinks they're an expert about formative assessment, they end up telling others what to do. In fact, we've seen teachers in their second year of teaching being great leaders of these groups because they know they don't have the answers. This is not a group of experts telling non-experts what to do. It's professionals getting together to give each other mutual support for the things that each teacher has decided for themselves they want to improve about their practice. So do you think it takes a long time to plan before you start this or should they just have a go? The only thing that needs to happen before these meetings start is that each teacher decides to try out one idea. As soon as each teacher has got one idea they've tried out in the classroom, they're ready to meet with others to talk about the experience. And so you can actually over plan this. I think the best motto is that phrase, ready, fire, aim. Get started, try it out. If it's not working, adjust it slightly. But the really important thing is it's about getting things happening in classrooms so the teachers can talk about them in these meetings. What about the age of the students? Does it matter or will it work for any age? One of the questions that we often get asked is what age of students is appropriate for? And we haven't discovered anybody for whom this is not appropriate. So whether you work with five-year-olds or 25-year-olds in universities, we have found the ideas of formative assessment equally applicable. Of course, the techniques that you use will be different according to the age of the students, but the five strategies, as far as we know, are applicable to all learning. And is it just Sweden, or are there other countries that are trying this out? It's been very gratifying for us to see how much interest there is in this work in Sweden, but it's really important to note this is not just a local phenomenon. Two-thirds of the primary schools in Singapore are using this model. South Australia has adopted this model as its statewide model of professional development. So all over the world, we see people harnessing the power of formative assessment to improve student learning.